My name is Rich Carpenter, and I'm excited to show you the latest technology from Emerson. It is a software product called Movicon Next, and it's really the first in the industry to combine the strengths of industrial IoT, local operator interface, plant level HMI SCADA, as well as analytics associated with manufacturing. This is a technology that's very useful across a variety of industries, including food and beverage, life sciences, uh, manufacturing in general, machine automation, and it's helping many people to become more efficient in their manufacturing facilities. I have a demonstration over here and I'll walk you through it. This is an operational scenario. We're gonna look at a manufacturing facility and a process facility that's making the main product. Now first, I'm just uh, by simply clicking, I'm in the main screen. It happens to be a brewing application for beer. You can see on the left-hand side, the process is currently stopped, which recipe is in place, what the target production is. And then on the right-hand side, I can actually change the recipe to make a different product. Everything else adjusts accordingly, and now it's ready to go for the next batch. By diving in a little bit deeper, I can see the overall plant status. Now, a lot of times you need to do this. You need to know which equipment is currently being cleaned or scheduled to be cleaned next. It won't be available for the next batch. You want to know what ingredients are currently in the, the particular piece of equipment, maybe how much of those ingredients. If there's a problem, you want to quickly have your eyes um, moved to that problem. In this case, you see that there's an alarm that's occurred. Down below, you can see this part of the process has not really started yet. That will start relatively quickly. You can see now these tanks are full. Some really good capabilities, like I can put this into manual mode and then I can manipulate the state of each of these. Maybe you need to do an emergency cleaning and you want to do that manually. If you look up at the top, there's some messages that are coming to the operators. And if you look down at the bottom, there's ways to navigate between the different applications. On the top right up here, there's an alarm screen, so I can see that six things of interest have occurred. And if I click on that, I'll get into a screen, which we'll see in a minute, that has all of the details. If you want to dive a little level deeper, actually, into the process itself, it's as easy as clicking on this process tag. Now you see, actually, in context of production, starting over here with the ingredients being mixed, going through different fermentation processes, purifying, the, the brew kettle itself, and then finally the product being produced and being sent to the assembly area where it's put into bottles and then shipped. So the full plant can be modeled with this type of product and you get an indication of the key process parameters for all of the equipment, the health of all of the equipment, and any alarms that have occurred associated with that equipment. So for example, if I just click on the alarm button up here, now I get a view of the different events that have happened go back to the main screen here, a lot of times you've got equipment that is running for a period of time and you'd like to know how well it has done over time. So you might do some analysis. Analysis would give you an indication of the production status, maybe how much of each product has been made. You can see sort of the short term and the near term trends for key process parameters. It's really great to know what's happening instantaneously, but a lot of times you need to understand what's happening over time a lot of times the process engineers are looking at that and making continuous improvements to lean out to improve the product production and to just make it operate better as an overall plant. If I go back to the main screen that we'll see here, now we can take a deep dive into the manufacturing area. Now manufacturing is being fed the product from the process side. It's coming through various pipes and tanks and valves and pumps into the main part of the plant and you can see here the bottles are going in empty and they're being filled. And we can see that actually represented here in the 3D graphics. Then they go through a process of being put into boxes and then palletized on their way out. You can see also here we're able to show the total production, the target production, the actual production, the order number, the batch that's associated with it. And you can even dive deeper into some of the machines. So I can, for example, look at one of the machines that's part of the process, see it operating in 3D. If there's any kind of alert, I'm told about it, but I actually see it moving. And so for operators that aren't as familiar with the equipment and maybe there's a specific problem on a part of the machine, we can highlight that to them very quickly. They can get out, they can make the fix and, and get things up and running again. 
If they need to put things into some kind of a manual mode or start and stop for safety or other reasons, they can do that right from the main screen. From an analysis standpoint, here we have a capability called overall equipment effectiveness, OEE. And here you're talking about, you know, what is the availability of your equipment for production? What is its current performance? And what kind of quality am I seeing? Am I producing the right product at the right time in the volumes that I expect? Am I scrapping portions of the product or is it all coming out well? This might even include the labels on the bottles. Are they skewed? Uh, in which case you have to maybe do some repair on it. So a lot of information is available through OEE. And a really nice thing about the Mobicon Next product is you can get OEE very simply just built on top of the same product. You don't need a more sophisticated MES system, which can cost a lot of money and take a lot of time to get that basic capability around OEE. You can get it at the machine level, the line level, uh, maybe even multiple machines, and see where your problem area is and, and target those for improvements. Okay, next I'm going to show you what the engineer does in order to set up the Mobicon.next system to be able to create the types of applications that we just saw. Mobicon at its heart is an application builder, which is why it can be used across so many different manufacturing types and industries, and this is the tool that people use to create those applications. You can see right here that I can create a new project. I'm actually going to uh, create an empty project through an empty project wizard, which is really oriented around making it very, very simple to do. So first of all, I'm going to have it on the local server, which means it's running on my local PC. I could actually have it in a distributed environment and even a redundant environment, but I'm just going to use the local server here for now. And I'm going to give the project a name. I'll just say that it's the demo project here and basically hit the finish. Here, I'm going to click into the I.O. data server, and in the I.O. data server, there's a tag list. And in that tag list, I'm just going to go ahead and get that started. And now you can see up here, I have the tag list, and I'm just going to add a new tag. Now, for this particular demonstration, the first tag that I want, I would like it to be a, a Boolean tag rather than a floating point tag, so I'm just going to make that change. So now I have a Boolean tag that I've created. I'd like to create one more. And this tag, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a floating point. That's going to represent the value in a tank itself. Now, if I was connected to the plant floor equipment, I would actually be able to put in the address, either as an OPC variable or uh, other mechanisms that ties it to the PLC that actually is managing that piece. But for now, I've just made these as local variables within my screen itself. That's really all I need to do to create the variables that I'm going to use. So next, I'm going to go to the screens and create a new screen. You can see that from the screens, I've hit the new button and I've got a little pop-up. It gives me the information associated with the screen, the monitor screen size and that type of thing. I could have it variable, but in this case, you know, I've specified the type of monitor. And I'm going to call this the fill demo screen. It's just going to show how quickly you can take a tank and a pump and bring those all together. You can see I've got a nice grid here and I've set it up so that the items will snap to the grid, make it very easy to use. And over here, there's also a very rich symbol library. I'm gonna make good use of this symbol library. The first thing I'm going to do is to scroll down to where we have a series of pumps that are available. And there's a number of special pumps. I'd like the ones that are digitally animated. They're capable of being seen um, in this way and you know, set it up so that we have a preview of those pumps. And I'm just gonna select one here. I've got a nice pump that I can take and uh, drag it over into the screen. I wanna make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And now I have a pump that's part of my process. I'm gonna do the same thing to go to the symbol library and instead of a pump this time, I'm gonna take a tank. There's other capabilities besides the rich symbols in, in the toolbars area. So for example, I can bring in a set of buttons. And so in this case, I'm gonna take a, a be bezel button, just a standard round bezel button, and I'm gonna put it over here. That's gonna allow me to start and stop my pump, so that's a, a nice capability associated with it. And then I'm gonna have an emergency button if I need to stop things in production uh, anytime quickly. So here I have the basic screen. And you know that's a good representation of a relatively simple application in the plant. But now I've got to tie this screen actually to the tags that I created earlier. So I'm going back to my tag list 
And variable number one, if you remember, that was a Boolean. I'm gonna take that Boolean and I'm just gonna drag it and put it inside of the pump here. And so now this particular variable is tied to that pump. When that variable goes to a certain value, that pump is gonna turn on. And then likewise, variable one, that was the floating point. I'm gonna tie that to the tank. Again, I just drag and drop it. I set it in the tank and now they're associated. Likewise, I'm gonna put the variable associated with the tank tied to the slider. That way, when I move the slider up and down, the tank values will change and you'll get a chance to see it. The last thing I really need to do is what's called animation. And in that case, I just wanna show on this pipe when the fluid is flowing and when it's not. And to do that, I go to this animation menu. I have the opportunity to change the border color, which is what I'm going to do here. And based on an expression, I'm gonna be able to set that value. So here, once again, I'm going to use the, the tag called variable, and the animation will be to set the color when that particular item changes. All right, so now we've got our screen completed. I have a pump, it's got a pipe tied to a tank. I have an on button and an off button and a slider to show the value of the liquid that's in the tank. All I have to do at this point in time is hit the start button. That will start the project running after a quick save. So here's our screen that we created. Here's the buttons. You can see that they change a little bit when my cursor goes on it. And that allows me to change the values of the variable in order to show that liquid has entered the tank. Normally this would be coming from the automation on the plant floor through a simple connection to that variable, but I can show it here with this particular application. When I hit the off button, the pump goes off, the line is no longer full of fluid, and it's gonna automatically start to drain. And so you can see relatively easily with some very nice objects that are pre-built, I can create a screen, it's representative of my process, I can quickly see the status to give me visibility into the equipment, I can interact with an operator via, via various buttons, and I can dynamically see the changes to the system. So this is a great way to be able to represent your plant and good, good value and help you to operate it better. All right, so I've just had a chance to walk you through the Movicon Next product. You've seen how we use it operationally to improve efficiency, to control the equipment with uh, better visibility, to really understand what's happening in production. We're able to see the alarms so we can dispass maintenance people to the plant as quickly as possible. We've seen production reports that are useful for the plant managers to be able to improve things on a day-to-day -day basis. We've seen how it interfaces to people through phones, if they're mobile and other mechanisms. So we really had a good chance to look at operationally how the product works. I also showed you how you set up and configure an application. It's super easy to work with the integrated development environment work from a very standard set of symbols that you can quickly use to represent your production process, animate those so that people can understand it at a distance and really understand the production scenario, and also get it up and running uh, very, very quickly.